75 years after Dandi, India's salt workers look for their place in the sun. Some 75 years ago, Mahatma Gandhi shook the British Empire with a grain of salt. The Dandi Salt March was the beginning of the end of the British Empire. It electrified the masses. Thousands of people defied the government. They courted arrest by asserting their right to make salt from the sea. The six billion people on earth need salt to survive. So do animals and plants. This white crystal has inspired international trade, shaped empires and sparked rebellions. Apart from food, salt has 14,000 uses, ranging from paper and pulp production to textiles to explosives. Some 120 countries make salt today. Total world production has increased during the past century from 10 million tons to about 210 million tons. The US is the world's largest producer, followed by China. India ranks third with a production today of nearly 17 million tons. The salt industry started much before the Britishers came to India. At the time, we were making salt sufficient to meet the requirement of our country. But after the Britishers came to India, heavy duty was imposed on the salt with the result. The salt production has dwindled and we have to resort to import from UK and Aden. It is only after the Gandhi Irwin Pact, salt production has increased substantially and with the result in during 1950, we were able to achieve self-sufficiency in the country. The salt industry was de-licensed in 1996. India gradually became an exporter of salt. It exports about 2.24 million tons. Salt is produced in India in different ways. Solar evaporation is the main method. Another method is vacuum evaporation. This is done by large companies like Tata Chemicals. About 80% of the salt produced in India is from sea brine. Subsoil brine found mainly in Rajasthan and the little ran of Kutch in Gujarat is another important source. The private sector dominates salt production in India accounting for a whopping 98%. Salt production in India is seasonal and takes place in the period between two monsoons. Agriculture depends on a good monsoon, but for salt production, a monsoon delayed or denied is good news. Salt production units are classified into four categories, ranging in area from 10 acres to more than 100 acres. Gujarat produces about 70% of India's salt. Tamil Nadu ranks second with 16%. Rajasthan is third with about 9%. Salt production in India is a labor-intensive industry, directly employing over a lack of people. At least half a million people depend on salt production. There are different kinds of salt workers depending on the kind of salt the location and the pattern of entrepreneurship. The worker may be hired by the leaseholder himself who owns the salt pan or by a manager or a labor contractor on behalf of the leaseholder. The Agaryas in the little Ran of Kutch, Gujarat and the Bandewals of Rajasthan are entrepreneurs come workers. Their families usually provide almost all the labor most salt workers belong to the backward classes and communities. Many of them are migrants. An average salt worker family has five members. More than half the population is between 16 and 60 years of age. Many own a house, but these houses are usually either kacha or semi-pakka. They work from 180 to 300 days a year. 
Their average daily wage is between 40 rupees and 120 rupees. The average per capita monthly income is 600 rupees. About one-fifth of the workers live below the poverty line. A unique spot in India's salt farming landscape is the desert of the little Ran of Kutch in Gujarat. Some 150 small and large salt pans operate here, mainly in Surendranagar and Patan districts. Some 15,000 families, merchants, agarias, laborers, carry out salt farming in the little Ran of Kutch during the September-March season. A few of these families come from neighboring districts and go home now and then. Others live here for the entire season of about eight months in small shacks. Young children grow up playing in salty water under the blazing sun and sometimes doing sundry jobs in the salt pans. Merchants who own leases for salt farms advance the agarias a sum of money and later buy salt from them at a fixed rate which is often one-third of the normal rate. The salt workers perform a number of chores. They dig wells and install pumps to transfer brine. They prepare the land near the wells, a tedious process for which they have to dig, clear plots, loosen the soil. They then construct condensers and pans by bunding the land and set up channels for inflow of brine from the wells. Workers harden and even out the salt pan by trampling it repeatedly with their bare feet. After brine flow and its evaporation, a salt bed forms. The workers drag heavy wooden rakes on the salt bed to prevent flaking of salt and obtain large grain crystals. The last stage in production is that of collection and storage of salt. Salt is heaped up in pans, loaded into trucks and transported out. Labor is in high demand for this operation. The entire process takes three or four months and two salt crops are harvested in one season. Tractors and trucks move salt over short distances. Railway wagons carry them over long distances. During the peak salt season, enough railway wagons are not available and salt producers find them expensive too. This impacts on the salt industry's revenues, also indirectly on the salt workers. In marine salt production, seawater is admitted at high tide by sluice gates through creeks or man-made canals to low-level reservoirs. Salt collection from marine salt pans is much more tedious than from inland pans. Salt layers are broken with metal hose and shovels. Disintegrated salt is collected in small heaps, washed and loaded into trucks. Thus, the work of salt pan workers, marine or inland, is arduous and backbreaking. For most salt workers, occupational hazards are high. Many of them suffer from eye problems because of constant exposure to the glare from salt pans. Their feet develop lesions and rashes from exposure to saline water and stamping on salt pans. Knee injuries and pain in arms and legs are common afflictions. Despite these hazards, salt workers at many places lack access to protective gear such as eye goggles, gun boots and gloves. Amenities for first aid and for rest and recreation are inadequate. <laughs> Muttumani is from a village near Tutikor in Tamil Nadu. She breaks down as she describes the plight of her husband who is 45. He moves about in a wheelchair. He is paralyzed with arm and leg injuries because of his work in salt pans for 30 years. Muttumani wails. I have spent a lot of money that I can't afford. 
but he has not been cured. We have six daughters. We need help. One of the most serious problems in salt pans is that of drinking water. Workers in some areas get portable water through tankers and pipeline, but others do not. The result? Workers suffer from stomach disorders and waterborne diseases which affect their work as well. Children of salt workers lack a normal upbringing. They drop out of school early. Vijubhai is a typical Agaria from Patan district. 25 years old, he got married at the age of 17. His wife and three children work in the Ran for 8 to 10 months a year. Vijubhai says, Life is very tough, though I was born here and I'm used to this environment. If we fall ill or get hurt, there's no transport even to take us to the Santalpur hospital 25 kilometers away. I would like my children to get educated, but there's no school here. So they grow up playing and working in the desert. Uh, salt manufacturing being a seasonal industry, which can work only during the fair weather season. I think uh, the salt workers cannot be employed uh, around the year. So actually the salt manufacturing activity starts sometime immediately after the monsoon and continues up till the onset of monsoon. And most of the salt laborers are migratory in nature. You know, they have, during the off season, they go for agriculture. But the condition of the salt workers, you know, the environment condition under which they are working is really harsh. Exploitation of salt workers is unfortunately fairly widespread. Most of the laborers are in debt. But workers employed by large companies enjoy better working conditions. Salt is a very cheapest uh, commodity. So each and every coins will cost us. But our prime duty is to take care of our own people, our own uh, laborers. We are providing them the basic facility of drinking water. Not even drink, but clear drinking water. That drinking water uh, consumed by our management category staff, consumed by our own workmen and laborers also. So we are equally treat them and giving this facility. In addition to that, we are for education part, in our own colony you have seen that the education for that we have a teacher and uh, where the, our labor students are getting education. Another main factor is the health part. So you can see this uh, uh, illiterate people have no conscience about their health, in which it is our prime duty to see about their health. So in that case we are operating one dispensary daily 4 to 8 at evening at our colony. For your kind information our budget part is about uh, 2 rupees 36 pesa or 3 rupees 36 pesa per ton of salt which we are uh, providing in our budget in addition to that for the medical part. In colony you have seen that the uh, house is also provided them. In field also, as per the Factory Act and whatsoever government implementation is uh, 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 provided, we are providing them, uh, first of all, the gumboots, cap, sunglasses and gloves. So, which in that case, the skin prevention is also, we take care about them. And the safety part uh, is also, we have considered all the safety part. Even in colony, we have an additional facility of electricity supply rather than this GAB supply, BG man, generator uh, power supply. Where, for your one information, for your information that after immediate after cyclone, within 24 hours we have started power supply. Would cooperatives of salt workers solve their problems? It's difficult to start a cooperative, more so to keep it going. Several attempts at setting up cooperatives have failed, unable to overcome fierce resistance by vested interests. However, there are exceptions like this cooperative in Tutikorin. This salt society was started in 1946. Today, it has 335 members. 
இந்த உப்பானது பாக்கெட் அயோடின் கலக்கப்பட்டு பாக்கெட் மூலம் ஒரு கிலோ பாக்கெட் மூலமாக தமிழ்நாடு அரசு நிறுவனம் மூலம் எங்கள் சங்கத்தின் தொழிலாளர்களுக்கு நாங்கள் கிராஜுவேட்டி பணிக்குடை We give the workers gratuity, provident fund, paid leave and festival bonus. Thirty years ago, we built 40 tiled houses for senior staff. We have applied for a loan to modernize our salt pan, which will help us improve quality and obtain better prices for our salt. Electricity is the biggest cost item in our budget. If we get a power subsidy, we will be grateful to the government. Tutikorin is an important center for salt production in Tamil Nadu. Some 1,500 salt pans, employing about 10,000 salt workers, produced nearly a million tons of salt in 2004. The problems of salt workers in Tutikorin are similar to those in Gujarat. Periyasami of Moonachendu village in Tutikorin, Tamil Nadu says about a thousand workers in his area depend on salt pans. We are unable to work after the age of 45. There is no work for five months a year. Roads and sanitation facilities are poor. Loans are available only at a high rate of interest. Workers are unable to save any money. Like women in agriculture and fisheries, women in salt farms perform many roles as breadwinners, wives, mothers and homemakers. They are busy from morning till night. They slog and sweat but get little recognition, let alone reward. Nyanammal from Tutukurin says women from salt pans have undergone sterilization. So, carrying heavy loads is unwise, but they have no option. They have to do it. She demands government assistance for medical care and housing. During the 10th five year plan, a scheme called Namak Mazdoor Awaz Yojana has been formulated which envisages construction of 5,000 dwelling houses in, as a first phase of the program at a total cost of around 24.50 crores. We are also contemplating to provide portable drinking water to the salt workers at the place of work as well as the place where they live. We are in touch with the Bharat AV Electrical Limited to establish a pilot plans project for providing portable water by reverse osmosis process. So during the next one year, we will be putting up about five reverse osmosis plants in each of the salt producing states. The Gujarat government has introduced some health, housing and insurance schemes for salt workers. A census of salt workers, identity cards and mobile clinics are other activities undertaken by the state government. Mr. Rawal from Solaris Company in Gujarat discusses what the government and the private sector can do to help salt workers. As far as concerned with the welfare activity for the salt farmers, it should be a crit major criteria or major uh, important area for government and uh, corporate sector like us and whatsoever who are earning money from that salt. We had been paid about 126 lakhs rupees for this 3000 acre of the land. So this much revenue collected and it can be utilized for the development of salt industry. And it is uh, definitely there will be a very good and golden opportunity to grow this industry and take care of the salt farmers. 
main important thing is the monitoring this welfare activity is not a work for the government even because of they have so many work some ngo should come forward and take this responsibility for that thing there is no question of money money always there but uh, it is a question of monitoring this all the facilities should be percolated from top to bottom <coughs>